Alright guys, Tactical here back again today. Hope you all enjoyed yesterday's double upload. A lot of views on that Parasite. Um, kick to his team for dearing his teammates, girlfriend. Really some entertaining stuff. If you guys didn't see both those videos yesterday, I'll leave them links down below for you guys to check out. But today, I wanted to talk about the Chicago Huntsman. Of course, not the result they were looking for at their own home series, albeit it was online. We talked about the result of that in yesterday's video if you guys haven't checked it out. But I wanted to talk about today, the Chicago Huntsman. Should they consider making some changes? I'm sorry, some of you guys are saying in your head, no way. Some of you are probably saying yes. I'm not really sure where I uh, where my opinion is right now So I would be intrigued to hear yours in the comment section below We're gonna go through a number of ideas in today's video So like if you guys enjoy subscribe if you're new as always I would greatly appreciate it first of all This is what the CDL league looks like right now Dallas Empire at the top 150 points from the Chicago home series Chicago won 20 points winning two series there 130 and phase just behind them But they've only played four events and mutineers possibly could jump back to right to the forefront if they win the next event which I believe is in Florida or at least the Florida based home series branded home series all of that kind of stuff we'll talk about that when the time comes but this is what the league looks like right now of course Chicago in second place but a lot of people would say if you had to do power rankings right now they wouldn't put Chicago second they might put them third might put them even you know I've seen them down in like fifth and stuff like that behind teams like mutineers and the rocker based on recent performances and I'm you know I'm intrigued to hear your guys thoughts on that I don't exactly think I'd put them there but in my opinion they're not a top two team right now at the very least and for the talent on this team and as Asti's talked about on that trip cap episode that he did relatively recently he says that the players they have on this team there's no way they shouldn't be just winning everything or at least winning more than they are right now which begs the question should they consider switching something up especially because look there's no denying it if this was in a LAN environment, I think the Huntsman would be a better team than they are. The formal issue playing from Los Angeles isn't ideal. They're better players on LAN typically anyway than they have been online. So with all that being said, and teams like Dallas Empire and maybe Atlanta face to some degree are probably going to be better online than they would be on LAN. Definitely arguable with Atlanta or with uh, Dallas Empire indeed. We talked about that yesterday given the whole aspect. You don't have a crowd, all of this kind of stuff. Um, you know, the pressure is off to some degree for guys like Shotzi and Illy, and especially Shotzi, probably one of the reasons why We've seen him perform much better over this coming weekend or this previous weekend drop like a 1.29 or something outrageous. Those are simp numbers with the SMG. With that being said, the, the rest of the season is online, right? And it definitely does matter at the very least. Yes, these tournaments aren't going to be considered championships, I suppose, in the long run, but there's still wins. The um the money still counts at the end of the day, and people will look back on the season and will look at the Huntsman team and say, okay, yes, there is the online caveat, but if they don't win any more championships the rest of the season, questions will be asked about you know the, the power rankings in terms of how good these players are the stature of these players will reflect how the rest of this season goes and the organization as a whole the Chicago Huntsman will be affected if they don't manage to win one of these online tournaments for the rest of the year so yes things don't matter to some degree but at the same time these tournaments are still important and um, the teams that win them will still be highly regarded and can still win a hell of a lot of money doing so right and also there's the talk about Call of Duty championships whether that will go ahead if it does go ahead later this year maybe August September time I imagine if it is played on LAN is what I'm getting at I don't think there'll be a crowd I do not think we'll be at the point yet where we can have all the people in the stadium I don't think that's going to happen so if it is on LAN then I imagine there still won't be a crowd which probably will favor Huntsman less than it would have done if they are playing in front of a crowd which can be nerve-wracking for the team against them right so things to consider for the Huntsman the rest of this season maybe they're not in the best state right now so obviously they have a few options at their disposal maybe it's not worth going down the route of any of them but clearly they're not in the same state as a team they were now than when they won the London home series at the start of the season and um, yeah maybe there are some options for them going forward so we'll talk about them in this video this is how things went for them this weekend losing first to the New York subliners who then lost to Atlanta phase Huntsman dropped down to beat the Royal Ravens beat the subliners again before getting 3-0'd by a very very strong Dallas Empire team indeed so before this tournament Huntsman had beaten the Empire of course on LAN the only team they had lost to on LAN was the Florida Mutineers and um, you know obviously didn't go so great for them last weekend of the Chicago Hunt series against the Mutineers again they've only lost one series on LAN so far this season but this past weekend they lose to the Subliners and Dallas Empire so 
things are obviously not going so great for this team right now and maybe there's are some other options so as I say this is what the season looks like in terms of LAN events the only series they've lost the entire season is to the Florida Mutineers but there's no denying that since right at the start where Chicago were looking so strong they have fallen off to at least some degree even before they were getting to LAN not necessarily they've fallen off but other teams were clearly improving and Dallas Empire were clearly improving um, you know to the point where they won their own championship at the Los Angeles event and Chicago couldn't quite make it happen in the ones that they attended further along and now we're online it's looking less and less good for the Chicago Huntsman effectively by the week so let's have a look at some stats here real quick this is what it looks like for Atlanta phase you know Selium, Simp dropping absolute big numbers Major Maniac there as well then the Dallas team they've lost a lot of series this season they've also played a lot of series which is why you see these numbers so high these stats credit to Cam Allen link down in the description box below if you guys want to check out the spreadsheet which all of this stuff comes from but yeah shot C at 1.02 that has increased quite significantly significantly since the most recent one and this is what Chicago looks like formula to 1.05 but we'll have a look just in a second here at the stats from this past weekend because that's probably more interesting related to you know what this team could potentially do going forward so these are the top three squads Atlanta Faze, um, Chicago Huntsman and of course the Dallas Empire that won it Shotzi with an unbelievable performance on the weekend a lot of that could be down to the online situation but clearly improved as a player regardless but the Chicago Huntsman team are in an interesting spot. So they put Formal back on the main assault rifle. He had a 1.1 KD. The rest of the guys didn't quite perform as you may have expected or at least hoped them to this weekend. They had difficult matches. Let's not forget Royal Ravens are a solid squad. Subliners are clearly much improved and then they had to play a really dominant Dallas Empire squad on the weekends. But as RST says, right, you look at this team, this should be a team that's making grand finals, contending for championships every single time. And I still think they're a championship contender. They can definitely still win championships. But in the current state of the team they're not favorites by any means right and obviously Dallas Empire a lot of people are talking about being the number one team in the game right now and uh, Huntsman it, it's not you know it's not acceptable for this team not to be competing for championships I suppose and as I say they still are but um, you know Dallas are clearly improving uh, Huntsman improving it's tough to say so what approaches could they take here because it's difficult to really suggest any good actions given how dominant these players have been in the past and continue to be at times this season this is one of them to mention the, um, the enigma that is Jordan General. So General, of course, the substitute on this squad right now, but you can see here a clip with him using the MP5, which is interesting. I think this is in tens or something like that. Given that the game is relatively SMG heavy, you've got Formula Narcities on the team, Formula on the main assault rifle. Narcities did mention at key point in the trip cap that at one point in scrims a few weeks ago, they weren't playing very well in the online environment. And that he said that if they stopped, if they didn't win any more scrims for a little bit of time, he would step out of the team and let General into the squad, even if just for the purpose that Narcities could look from the team from afar and consider and decide what exactly was going wrong with the team and why they weren't winning as many matches as they should have been in an online environment. They did turn things around in their scrims supposedly after that so they didn't bring General in but it has been on the table or at least thought about through Astasi's head is maybe bringing General into the squad. So is that a change you would consider making? Who knows? I think the only reason why you would potentially consider that is if the vibes in the team aren't doing so good and you think General could bring something else to the squad. He's clearly a very talented player. He's done a lot of things in the past. I'll just show a, um, a couple of clips on screen. That one and also one with him using the AR on Azir Cave. I'm watching Top Broken. Top Broken pushing left side. Top Broken dead. One more top. Dead. I'm 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 One shot. One shot. Bottom. Bottom. Right to right to right. One shot. One shot. One shot. Stone. 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 I'm just I'm holding for a second. So clearly a talented player. Is he more talented than the guys on the Huntsman starting roster? I don't think so, right? There's a reason he's on the bench and not on the starting team already. Then again, having said that, if the team is having some chemistry issues, it's possible General could come in there at least for a little bit of time. So maybe Arsites or Formula or whoever, the AR decides to step back. And General, of course, not going to be the quickest player. So if there's anyone's place in the team he's most likely to take with Formula on the AR, it would be Arsites, which is a change I really don't think is beneficial for the squad but at the same time it could allow Arsties and the rest of the guys to step back a little bit look at their scrims through a different lens and um, kind of readjust and refocus on the squad and maybe Arsties then comes back in for general and maybe that's something you try and practice for a few days just to have a different perspective on how the team is playing that's an option it may be worth a try just to see how things work from an external perspective as Arsties talked about on that trip cap podcast but this is what general's done throughout his career every single year general makes a team at least the years he's played which 
is a, effectively not necessarily a championship contender, but right up there. Um, yeah, the Advanced Warfare days, the Enigma 6 team, even in Infinite Warfare, um, the Enigma 6 squad did come really strong. I think they even beat up to gaming maybe at Anaheim or one of these events. And you know, the latter half of his career here, not the latter half necessarily, but the latter half of his um, CWL journey, World War II, still on Enigma 6. If you guys don't know, um, General's family effectively own this organization. But last year, they came fourth of the World Championship with a very solid squad. Cinder being the coach, Cinder being picked up onto this squad right now, the Chicago Huntsman. And a fair few people have mentioned to me how it's very possible that this team doesn't really listen to Cinder. And what are the options going for us? Because you look at a squad like Dallas Empire, and this is the, um, the comment that I saw on the Grand Finals VOD of um, Dallas Empire versus Atlanta Face. And I thought this was pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure I saw Bitter in the comment section of yesterday's video. I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on this. Notice how Krim was labelled a villain because he criticises Dashi and TJ and others for showing up late to scrims and practice. Now RST says it's an ongoing issue with Formal and Gunless. Where are Dashi and TJ now? How did the Huntsman do this weekend? Kids getting paid six figures to play a video game, take it for granted, etc, etc. Interesting comment to say because people have been talking about, as RST says, said in that interview, the egos on this Huntsman squad. Doesn't seem like that is the case with the Dallas Empire. That's what Clay and Krim have been talking about, that these guys they're playing with now are hungry to learn, they're hungry to improve, and they're happy to listen to the veterans in Clay and Krimzix to show them how to win championships, and for Krim and Clay to get the most out of their, you know, crackhead rugrats, as someone described them yesterday that I saw. So that's one way to look at it, and you look at the Huntsman team and you think, are they really listening to their coach? Of course, Rambo Ray is now coming to the squad in Dallas Empire. See Seems to have helped them improve. So, in far as the Huntsman go, what change can you make to change that? Because the egos on this squad aren't going anywhere. If they are making internal excuses in their head about, oh, it's only online, doesn't really matter so much, what change can you possibly make that turns the corner? I don't think general bringing into the team is going to make any difference in that aspect. The only reason why I say it could be beneficial is just for Arsties or one of the guys to step back and look from a different perspective at the team and have, a, have an outside view on how the squad is performing. But apart from that... What is the change for the Huntsman? Do you even make one? But it does seem right now, unless there's some sort of mental change within the squad, they're not going to be a team that's going to win championships the rest of the season, at least when Dallas Empire and Atlanta phase are around. We haven't seen Atlanta versus Chicago yet. We don't know how that would go, but it must be said that clearly Huntsman are not quite performing to the level they need to be. Part of that is online, but as I say, the rest of the season is online, so you have to kind of get used to it right now, and it seems like Dallas Empire are improving at a rapid pace, where Huntsman aren't really at that level yet. So who knows what the change is. Um, I don't think it's a change of coach or anything because as RST said in that podcast, once again, I will link it down below for you guys if you haven't checked it out quite yet. He was saying that, you know, people who say that the coaches are at fault for stuff like this are, you know, talking rubbish effectively. He says that the players are a number one responsibility here. So changing the coach, I don't think it's going to make any difference. It's whether the players actually listen to the coach and decide amongst themselves that, look, we, we were the best team at the start of the season. It's not happening now. Um, you know, we need to buckle down and, and get our act together here because the rest of the season is online we have to kind of deal with it um, you know for better or for worse and these are some thoughts from the reddit here that kind of imply similar things that Chicago uncoachable Dallas approved a lot since Rambo has came on as their coach um, you know Chicago won't improve until they get a wake-up call they all start listening to one person so you know there's some arguments to be said here but at the same time they've lost literally one series on LAN they're not uncoachable that's a crazy thing to say um, yeah everything with Chicago is so blown out of proportion definitely do agree with that to some to some degree but but, you know, are people really being reactionary when this is a team that should be a championship contender and right now doesn't seem like they're going to perform or beat the Dallas Empire or potentially Atlanta Face the next time they play them? Definitely possible they could still beat them, but it doesn't feel likely to me right now. So I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Just wanted to quickly mention this from Clayster. Average placing for me in Crim on LAN, 1.2 in these online tournaments is a 1.4. You'll say we aren't the best duo ever. Kind of a, maybe a controversial statement from Clayster, but in terms of overall accomplishments and records, 1.2 average placing on LAN is a remarkable stat line. Um, you know, blows out the water any other duo that's played a few tournaments at the very least. So yeah, thanks for watching the video as always. Like if you guys enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you next time.